Welcome back to the channel. We are here once again with our Dell 3880, which is having a little bit of an identity crisis, but trust me, that's that's what it is. Where it's going to be the final installment of all of our upgrades, which is going to be the software benchmarking. If this is your first visit to the channel, there's a playlist for this thing, which I'll link right up there and down in the description, so you can go get all caught up if you'd like. But before we get started, we need to talk about a sin I made in the last video. Way back in there where I'm shining the light, you can just barely see it. So right there is our RAM. I accidentally put both sticks of RAM on the same memory channel, which would have badly hampered performance. And one of my subscribers managed to catch that and point it out to me. As you can kind of see, I have fixed it since then. FYI, it is a one hour job to pull everything out of here to get down to the RAM. So that was a good time to get straightened out, but it's straightened out now. Uh, consequently, they're, I think, also both on channel 2 now. Shouldn't make any difference, but if you see that, it's just luck of the draw. That's the one I happened to put it into. I wasn't paying all that much attention to it at the time. Speaking of the RAM, it's as good a time as any to mention that it is some kind of overclockable, I don't want to say fancy, but some sort of specialized RAM where we can configure settings and do fun things. Since now we have a, what I'll call a traditional chipset in the machine instead of what Dell gave us, we can tweak around with stuff. My ground rules for the performance benchmarking going in is that unless something is set grossly incorrectly, we are not going to tweak that stuff. And I think that's basically the only fair way to go about it because otherwise I could tune and tweak and mess with settings forever and potentially get a result that is unstable a month from now in some application. I won't know about it until it's way too late. So basically I'm going to let this thing auto configure and if something along the way jumps out at me as being really wrong, I will worry about it then. So let's get down to the question that has probably been asked more than any other, and that is whether or not you can preserve your Windows installation on your new hardware. And I am surprised to report that it appears that you can. This thing has been up and built for weeks, and I've allowed it to call home to Mama Microsoft whenever it wanted to, and it has no complaints at all. Uh, we'll run Windows updates here just to kind of show you although I've run it many, many, many times. In fact, it, it, just before the video I ran it, it installed some security updates, so I'll probably reboot it before we continue on. But yeah, it is perfectly happy to just keep on trucking with the Dell Windows installation. And as you can see, it even wants you to install Windows 11, which personally I would do if I were you, and, and I will do once the series concludes. For me, since I want two computers at the end of this anyway, I want my Dell you know, more or less back the way it was when it came out of the box and my custom build. I'll need to buy another license of Windows anyway. But for you, if you don't care, uh, yeah, looks like maybe you can just get away with it. So as I said, I'm gonna get this thing rebooted and then we will get into our performance benchmarks. And we're back. Let's see if we can find user bench. Gaming, we've scored a raft, which, yeah, okay. Desktop, nuclear submarine again. Uh, workstation, I don't remember seeing as a category, but maybe that's just because I wasn't paying attention before. But raft, I guess, I don't even know what that means. Not impressive is what it means. But we are still just rolling with our GT 1030, so that's not a surprise. Uh, graphics 15% is below average 3D score. Yeah, we know. Overall, since it's performing above expectations, that's good. Memory, yeah, we're good. Still likes our SSD a lot. Still says it likes our CPU. Okay, yeah, hates our graphics card, nothing new there. How does our RAM score compare? Because before we were sort of speed limited by our chipset. Scroll through this stuff for you guys. Yeah, yeah, typical, you know, custom builds are much better than this one because, you know, people would buy a much better GPU. If I could buy a 3060 for 330 bucks, I might. I don't think you're going to get one, though. Prices have been coming down, though. And just looking at the generic percentages, things didn't come up all that much. You can see our RAM performance increased dramatically, though. So now that we have the chipset features to allow this 
I guess, budget RAM to boost up to the way it's supposed to behave. It looks like that made a big difference. And you can see our original dual channel RAM test. We've increased quite a bit since then, but we actually took a hit uh, down here when we couldn't get the same performance. So yeah, our RAM is much, much faster now. So that is neat. Let's check out our GTA 5 demo. And it's as good a time as any to mention that my capture device does not keep up with this PC when it's gaming. So we are gonna be going to the ghetto capture device of the camera just as soon as the test starts. And we're not seeing any kind of performance boost there. It's pretty much exactly the same as before. Yeah, I think same story there. Mid 20s seems about right. And I think the next one after this is the one with the plane, which is the last one. And I think we were seeing like up to 50 in some cases before. And maybe I'm out of my mind. I don't know. I'll let it run for a minute and see what happens. Hmm. Well, whether or not we used to, we don't now. Either way, it looks really good. I would say it's highly playable the way it is. So we didn't lose anything, which why would we? We're now gonna get into the test I'm the most excited about, which is the rendering performance test. This is the first video in the series where we unbox the Dell. And just as a performance benchmark, I've been re-rendering this over and over as we go, just to see how much speed we're picking up from the 10-year-old i7 that did it the first time. And I've already hit our first hiccup with the hardware conversion. Vegas here knows that we've changed hardware and it required me to deactivate a license on another computer in order to continue using it. So be advised, your software could be smarter than Windows or care more. One thing we're gonna do this time that's gonna be slightly different than the other times is I'm gonna monitor the CPU performance right from the start. I've discovered in, I think the i7 installation video, that Dell's throttling behavior was killing off processor performance by like 25% and there was no way to get it back. If I see something like that happening during this test, I'm gonna stop the test and go into the BIOS and see if we can configure it such that it doesn't happen. That's the entire reason why I have that crazy huge CPU cooler in it now. So we're gonna monitor uh, performance and temperatures and just see how it shakes out. And we're off. I can hear the CPU fans running, although they're not running very quickly. And so far we're at pretty much full rated frequency. If it looks like it's going to perform this test correctly, meaning at full rated frequency for the whole test, I may run it afterward to see if our result is different with hardware monitor shut down, just so it's not occupying resources. So it's winding down to its final few seconds here and it's been performing flawlessly. It's staying right at 125 watts, which is pretty much rated power. It's staying right at rated clock speed. Thermal management is hilariously good. Uh, to me from coming from a guy that's been using laptops for the last 10 years pretty much exclusively This is just hysterical and I could go into the BIOS and and Give it parameters to run these numbers even lower, but I think 150 F is perfectly acceptable uh, Fan speeds are perfectly acceptable in my opinion, too I'm sitting right next to this thing and it is quieter than the laptop I'm using to capture the screen recording that is sitting twice as far away so overall, I'm happy with this. It's performing well. It looks like our time there was 1801. I don't remember what it was before, but I'm gonna run this test again anyway and see if we have any improvement without running hardware monitor. So 18 minutes and one second is our current record. Alrighty, I'm just give it a fair shake. I went ahead and rebooted it too. Let's see if it can beat its own record. To my surprise, 
actually was a small performance improvement, 16 whole seconds, but we'll take what we can get. While that was going on, I went through the archive and looked up our previous data. With this exact hardware configuration in the Dell board, it rendered that video in 22 minutes and seven seconds. So that's nearly a five minute time improvement. Or if you're into them percentages types of things, it's about a 20% speed improvement, which hey, is about exactly what we saw in our performance measurements down here when it would derate the CPU. It was pulling about 20 to 25% of the performance out when it was cutting the die wattage down by half. So all of this makes sense to my little monkey brain anyway, that everything is going exactly as I would hope it would. I do think that potentially I could get more performance out of it by tweaking with some of the BIOS settings. I'm not sure if I can lean on this CPU more than I am. Uh, being that it's a non-K variant, I can't overclock it or anything, but I think I could tweak with it if I wanted to. Probably gonna leave that to the future because this is, I think, a more fair representation of what you're getting from Dell versus what you could get on your own without being a rocket scientist or even all that up to speed on how to do this stuff. Because honestly, I'm learning kind of the stuff as I'm going with some of this anyway. Before we move on from this, the 3880, as it came out of its box with its i3 and four gigs of RAM, rendered this video in 39 minutes and 38 seconds. We are now at 223% faster than that. So we have gotten quite a bit for our money as far as building it into a custom machine versus where we started. We're over, we're over two times quicker than we started, which is awesome. That's what I was looking for. And I nearly forgot our NVIDIA Pendulum demo. I don't really know what to expect here because it does respond well to RAM speed improvements. You'll have to forgive me, I forgot you probably can't see that, so we're back to ghetto screen cap. But it's chunking on up at 40 FPS now. Let's increase the camera speed to see what we end up with. Zoom out, see if we get both. There's 50 FPS, this thing's just ripping right along now. So that is 40 FPS. I believe when we got the Dell out of the box, it was like seven. So that is quite the improvement. All righty, we're gonna look at one more test here just because I wanna know, and since I wanna know, maybe some of you wanna know, so we'll do it together. This is a video I released last week of a little road trip I took. This video in the incarnation in which you see it on my old laptop that I rendered this on was a, I think an 18 hour render. I actually ended up having to make three passes through this thing. So there was like 70 hours of render time behind this video by the time you saw it. That's because of a couple things. One, I put these time skip segments in here, which I've never really tried to do in this software. And I don't think it handles it very well. Every time time jumps ahead, it basically takes that whole clip and recycles it three times. So it does like a weird thing with it. Um, another thing is this video was taken with an action cam. So it's a fisheye lens. And to help get rid of the fisheye effect or to minimize it, I put a video filter on it, just a, def a deformation of custom settings that I made that seemed to work pretty well with my NoPro, my generic action camera. But that also added complexity to the video. And as you can see, there are some other audio tracks and stuff like that in here that weren't in the original Dell video. This is just a more complicated and much longer render anyway. Each one of these clips that it's sped up, I want to say the in, in the entirety of the whole clip is probably in reality about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on where you are in the video. So depending on how Vegas is thinking about it, it could be rendering about eight hours worth of video here, depending on how it cycles things in and out. And that's just on this one track. More than a lot of you needed to know, but that's why this video took so long. Let's see how long it's going to take now. I'm not actually going to stick it out to the end. I'm just gonna wait until it stops counting up this approximation because the approximations end up being pretty accurate once it gets there. Well, holy crap, two and a half hours is a monumental improvement over, I don't even remember what I said a moment ago, what, like 16 hours? Super long render time. So that is huge. Yes, it's, it's like a real computer now. Let's take a look at hardware monitor just for the fun of it. So it is not fully loading the cores with power or demand. Temperatures are great. So I wonder what the bottleneck is. Well, 
these things tell different stories, but who knows what algorithms to use to get to the results. I trust hardware monitor more than Windows. But all the same, it looks like our only limitation is the CPU. Certainly not a thermal problem. I may look more deeply into this at a later date. So there you have it, folks. We got mild to wild all the way through the whole chain of events, everything that is reasonable and a few things that may not be reasonable to do to your pre-built cheap Dell. I'll probably make another video just summarizing some of my thoughts now that I think over 20 episodes about this thing are behind us. But other than that, we are done with this guy. Good time to mention to some of the folks that have come along since the last time I said it, that also means that we are very shortly going to be done with tech content on this channel too. It does not mean I am done with tech content, it just means I'm going to divorce the mechanical videos from the computer videos. Because although there are some of you that like both, the crossover is nowhere near close enough to maintain it all on one channel. And I've actually hurt my growth significantly by having that confusion. Tech videos will be found on the Broken Tech channel, which I will link up there and down in the description. As will the future of these dudes. Just because we're done here does not mean we are done. This guy is going into service as my my YouTube and PC it makes all the sense in the world. It was built for YouTube. It was built on YouTube. That's exactly what it needs to do. Its next stop in life is to receive this Live Gamer 4K digital capture card. So in the future, when I go to capture performance data from PCs, which by the way, there's an HP under test right now over on the Broken Tech, I don't have to point the camera at the screen. This guy should be competent enough to get the job done. The installation of that guy into that guy will also be at a video because eh, why not? We're here. Future of that guy, he is going to become an entertainment center PC for me out in my living room. I've got all kinds of things in mind for him, like some game emulation and some other interesting slash weird things that we'll be doing out there. But that's his new lot in life. A long enough timeline, this guy is going to end up with an i9 in him and the i7 is going to end up back in the Dell, despite the fact that we, we really don't get the performance out of it. But what am I going to do? I do want to put an i9 in this guy because it needs to be as fast as it can, really. So that'll be our new i9 host when we're done. Speaking of done, it's about time to end this one. I've been rambling for a while. As always, I want to thank you guys for stopping in for it. We will catch you on the next one.